every time you say I love you, you are expressing your appreciation, commitment, and your love for someone. Receiving those three words might be one of the sweetest and most heartwarming feelings ever. But that's not what it feels like for the millions of people who were victimized by the computer virus of the same name. The I love you virus is considered to be one of the most virulent computer viruses ever created. What really is this virus? Who made it? And why? To answer these questions, here's the story of how two Filipinos hacked 16 million computers and the Pentagon. In our increasingly information-based society, we are dependent upon the integrity of the information we receive, which is why computers have been really, really helpful. But back in the year 2000, a global epidemic in the form of a computer virus spread throughout the world. The story starts with two young Filipino programmers named Rionel Ramones and Onel de Guzman, who at the time were still college students at the AMA Computer College in the Philippines. The two of them were typical college students with hopes and dreams to finish their studies. A common requirement in order for students to graduate in college is for them to have a thesis, wherein they should propose and discuss a topic related to their field of study. As a computer science major, Onel de Guzman proposed a topic about a so-called Trojan horse, which can hack computers and steal private data including saved passwords and the like. Ultimately, the professors at the AMA Computer College rejected it. Because who in their right mind would accept a thesis about computer viruses? As he was not able to move forward with this topic, de Guzman eventually dropped out on his last year as a computer science student in the said college. Now, it is said that around that same time frame, the structure was created for the I Love You virus, also known as the Love Bug or Love Letter. May 5, 2000 was the date of the grand debut. The computer virus was attached in an email with the subject, Love Letter for You. This subject line was the reason why so many unsuspecting people fell victim and clicked open the file attachment that said, I love you. Hey, it was the 2000s and we didn't know any better. This attachment contained a VBS or Visual Basic script that automatically activates upon opening. The VBS is a compilation of command codes that orders what the computer should do. The moment it's activated, it has the potential to corrupt your computer and delete files that are stored in it. But that's not all it does. It also orders your computer to open the Windows address book that contains the emails saved in your computer. This in turn becomes the bridge for the I love you virus to explore the contents of all your private data, including your saved passwords and your contacts. Having all those contacts was how the virus moved from one email to another and so on and so forth. The virus first started appearing in the household computer systems of citizens in Pandakan, Manila, and eventually triggered a worldwide outbreak that reached Hong Kong, Europe, and the United States. The said virus caused major problems and overwhelmed a lot of organizations' computer systems. This resulted in an estimated billions of dollars' worth of damages and disruptions, and that number is just for the initial damage that it had done. It does not even include the amount of money that was spent to stop and remove the virus, which amounted to around $15 billion. And mind you, this was all in just a span of 10 days. It was documented that the virus affected around 10% of the computers that were connected to the internet at the time, which amounts to around 16 million computers. The removal and aftermath of the virus was not easy for the US as it made its way to the main system of the Pentagon and the CIA. They decided to temporarily shut down all of their emailing systems during the havoc that the virus had been causing. 
Now, what happened to Rionel Ramones and Onel de Guzman during those times? Well, their ISP or their internet service provider was flooded with calls from around the world, especially those from European computers. Their unknowing internet service provider was shocked by the overwhelming complaints which led them to conduct an investigation that made public the names of Rionel Ramones and Onel de Guzman. The two young Filipinos were then apprehended in their apartments, but then... Plot twist! The authorities didn't know what to do with them. What? This is because in those times, the existing laws in the Philippines did not classify what they did as a crime. This triggered an intense and thorough investigation by the authorities on proving whether Ramones and de Guzman committed a criminal act or not. However, in the end, the court dumped the case against them and declared Rionel Ramones and Onel de Guzman as free men. After that, the Philippine government did not waste time and just two months after the virus started, they passed Republic Act 8792 or the e-commerce law which will then be used should the incident ever happen again in the future. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button so you never have to wonder about your house ever again. Stay curious!